Right, in this video I'm going to show you how to determine, or calculate rather, the product moment correlation coefficient. Now in the first part of this video I'm going to do the long-winded way. Right? Now if you want to skip ahead to how I do it on the calculator, uh, the TI-82 stats, skip ahead to the end of this video. Okay? So, I'm going to do this the long-winded way. Now, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to work out the covariance SXY and then we're also going to have to find out the standard deviation of X and the standard deviation of Y so that R is equal to this. Okay, so um, I am going to be using the graphical calculator to help me um, so we'll see how this goes. So, first of all I'm going to find um, Sx. So Sx is the standard deviation of the x values. So I'm going to plug them into my calculator and to do that right. uh, standard deviation of the x values is 3.2489 dot 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 dot. Okay? Now let's find the standard deviation of the y values. So uh, do the same thing, L2, and we get uh, 6.8960. Okay, so they're my two standard deviations. Now I'm going to show you how to work out SXY the covariance. So I'm going to need uh, the mean of the x's, because I'm going to do x minus x bar. I'm going to do y minus y bar, so I'm going to have to have the mean of the y's. Then I'm going to have to have these two multiplied together, okay, to get me this column. So first of all, uh, the values of the x, the mean of the x values. Um, is 5.6 recurring, so x bar is 5.6 recurring, so we're going to have 11 take away 5.6 recurring, which is, sorry, 5.3 recurring. Then we're going to have uh, 2 take away 5.6 recurring, so minus 3.6 recurring, 4 take away 5.6 recurring, so that's minus 1.6 recurring, 5 take away 5.6 recurring, minus 0.6 recurring, then 3 take away 5.6 recurring, uh, minus 2.6 recurring, and then 9 take away 5.6 recurring is 3.3 recurring. Okay? Now, the Y bars. Okay, so Y bar is 12.6 recurring. So 19 take away 12.6 uh, recurring is 6.3 recurring. Um, then we've got 3, take away 12.6 recurring, is minus 9.6 recurring. 8, take away that. You can see why uh, this isn't a particularly good way to do it. It's just quite long-winded. Next one, 8.3 recurring. Then we've got 7, take away 12.6 recurring, uh, minus 5.6 recurring. Then 18 take away 12.6 recurring is 5.3 recurring. Right, okay, so now I'm going to multiply these things together. Times 6.3. Right, so this is 33.7. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to write these two... Um, Let's do it to two decimal places. So 3.7 uh, 
33.78. Then uh, 3.6 recurring times 9.6 recurring. So 35.44. Then 1.6 recurring times 4.6 recurring. 7.78. 0.6 recurring times 8.3 recurring. It's a negative, so it's minus 5.56. Then 2.6 recurring times 5.6 recurring. It's 15.11. And then 3.3 recurring times 5.3 recurring is 17.78. Right, I'm going to need to add those together. So we've got 33.78 plus 35.44, plus 7.78, uh, take away 5.56, plus 15.11, plus 17.78, is 104.33. You then divide that by n, the number of numbers that you have, so that's divided by 6, and that gets you 17.38, approximately. So we've got 17.38. Uh, divided by uh, 3.2489 and multiplied by the 6 point, I'll write it just as SY. So divide that number by 3.2489 times 6.8960 and I get 0 0.776 roughly, okay? Um, I've rounded several times, um, so it's a bit rough, but 0.776. So that would mean, um, because it is positive, it's reasonably close to 1, you would have um, its moderately positive correlation. It's veering on being strong correlation, um, because it's relatively close to 1 and further, far enough away from 0.5. So I'd probably say strong positive correlation there. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this very quickly, very easily on this calculator in just a few steps. Okay, so you just saw me go through um, quite a long and drawn out calculation. Um, doing this by hand to find the product moment correlation coefficient can be quite arduous. I'm going to show you how you can do it on your calculator very, very quickly. Um, the first thing I need to do, however, is make sure that one particular function is switched on. Um, so if you've done this already, if you've done it, then it should stay on and you'll never have to do this again. If you haven't, um, you best check. So we're going to go into the catalogue. So press second, then catalog, so the zero, and then you're going to get a whole load of things. And you're going to want to keep going down, and it's a bit of a way for a moment, and then you get down to diagnostic off and diagnostic on. You want diagnostic on. So enter on that one, press enter, and should come up with done. That means it's sorted. You're ready. There is a reason why we do this, and I'll show you why. Um, so, we're going to enter our numbers, go to Stat, and then Edit. So we're going to enter our numbers into List 1, so 11, 2, 4, 5, 3, and 9. Then we go to the right, and we're going to enter the Y values, so 19, 3, 8, 21, 7, and 18. Okay? Right, now you want to go to stat again, and you want to go to the right, and you want to go to lin reg. Now there's already this one here, the AX plus B, but I want you to go to A plus BX. This is the one that we use uh, for the linear regression, and this is the one we use here. So, number 8, lin reg, A plus BX, press enter. Then we want L1 and L2, so second, one for L1, comma, second, two for L2, and press enter. Now what you should find is you get the linear regression line with the A and the B, but you also get the value of R. 
this is the value 0.776 and when I did it before and I did it by hand I got 0.776 so I got quite a good approximation to the value of R so you can see that it is relatively close to 1 so it is positive correlation you could say that this is strong positive correlation um, it's not exceedingly strong but it is strong um, so that is what you need to do now if you hadn't done the diagnostic on process then the values of R squared and R do not appear they come up as blank so make sure diagnostic is on otherwise it just won't appear